Today's Pet Advice segment is sponsored by the Veterinary Care Center. We welcome Dr. Travis Gratton with the University Veteran Care Center. Good morning. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, glad to be here. So the past couple of weeks we've been talking weight management for our pets. Uh -huh. And I guess now, you know, what about exercise for the pets? You know, how does that work out? Obviously, everyone has different pets, different sizes, different ages. Um, like, where would you even begin? <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah, certainly it, it's one of those that um, big part of keeping fit and in shape and, mm -hmm. and hopefully aging gracefully with our pets. Uh, you know, the first of the year went uh, by and we all made great plans to do things. Of course, it was cold, dark in January. Well, of course. And, but now it's spring, so now it's time to get out. We're going to be you know, kind of moving outdoors a little mm -hmm. bit more in the next few months if the weather gets a little bit better here lately. Um, and, and so it's a great time to get out and get started with exercise. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's certainly some considerations to look into for, um, you know, how we do that with our pets, depending on who definitely, they are. Definitely, definitely. Like I have two dogs. One's about like 12 years old and one's maybe four. So there's definitely differences in um, their ages. Right. And should they be exercising differently? Um, Absolutely, you know, the, the young, f younger fit, even the middle age, relatively fit dog getting into an exercise plan, you know, even if they've been off for several mm -hmm. months because of just winter or lifestyles on our parts or, um, you know, injuries or things like that, you know, they recondition much easier. So it's a lot easier for them to get back into the swing thing, build up faster and, and get back to being fit. The older pets, just kind of like elderly people, <laughs> throw myself in heading into that category, uh, you know, takes a little more gradual mm -hmm. slope to get uh, back up to fitness and, and, and work into exercise. Okay, so I guess like different fitness activities levels, they just they affect how you plan for your for your walks, if you will, or trips to the park or whatever. Yeah, and like everything, you know, we, we need to start that, or just like exercise programs for us, you know, we, we don't want to go out and start running three miles a day, <laughs> you know, <laughs> not that I could if I wanted to, but um, you know, we, we want to start slow. We want to be realistic about what they can do, kind of assess where they are at mm -hmm. this point, set some goals that um, we can we can hit in the first, you know know, few weeks and then we start adding things, both length of exercises, difficulty of exercises. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe for the older pet, we start with just relatively f slow walks on fairly flat, you know, smooth surfaces, um, preferably grass and not concrete if we're bouncing around a lot, um, just like for people. Um, and, and then we work up to, you know, rougher surfaces, some more hills um, in and out of, uh, you know, berms and ravines or whatever and, and kind of build it up and, and eventually taller grass where we're actually having to work a little harder mm -hmm. with every yeah. step to get through. Um, so, uh, you know, and, you know, maybe we start at, at half a block and, you know, in a month we can maybe we can make that block with the older arthritic mm -hmm. or very overweight pet. Does it uh, matter what kind of uh, breed you have a dog? Yeah, certainly type plays a big role in when we're kind of assessing where we're going to go with things and where we start with them. You know, the, the short-faced brachycephalic breeds, uh, you know, bulldogs, pugs, Pekingese, you know, those guys are not built for a lot of exercise and especially heat and humidity really affect their ability to breathe. Um, you know, other, you know, long-legged, you know, those breeds that are designed for activity, um, you know, that, that are designed to run and cover ground, you know, they, they obviously have a different body style, a mm -hmm. um, little more endurance and, and uh, ability to do things and then um, certainly also you know what was the breed designed for because almost all breeds other than the toys were designed for certain tasks mm -hmm. and so if we can incorporate what their natural abilities are um, and, and utilize those to design things that they love to do um, it's a great uh, idea to where to start. Oh, well, that's a great way to start. Thank you. I think we're running out of time. Dr. Grant, thank you so much for being with us. And if you'd like to learn more information about University Veterinary Care Center, just head over to universityvetcare.com.